Welcome to Shopsick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today we have another episode from Taiwan. Today we are in the south of Taiwan in a city called Dangang. This is a port city and today we're going to be taking you around the city's market. And this place is home to some really unique foods that you can't really find elsewhere. So we're going to be trying some really cool street foods and then we're going to take you and show you around Dangang city. Show you some of the really cool sites and the famous temple that is here. And then we're going to head back up to Kaohsiung city which is about an hour drive north of here and take you for one more really unique street food. So it's going to be a good day make sure to stay tuned until the end you're not going to want to miss it so let's go so this market is a little bit sleepy feeling there's a lot of fresh vegetables a lot of fresh fruit and seafood because we are right on the coast here so you can see an abundance of different types of seafood and we are just strolling around checking out all the sites and waiting for our first stop to open up at about 8 a.m. It's just about 7.45 now. We've arrived at our first place behind me. They're just opening up. There's already a line. We are directly inside the market. It's super cool. We're gonna get in line right now. So we picked up a box of the brown sugar cakes from this really popular stall in the market. Unfortunately, they didn't want us filming uh, their setup, but we did pick up a whole box and I've got the cake right here. So you can see it is a rice cake. It's kind of like mochi and just look at how sticky that is. That's ridiculously sticky. And then all of that brown sugar on the inside. This just looks so good. We went here first because they usually sell out really quick. So let me give it a try. Oh wow. Yum. It's exactly like mochi. Just pounded rice cake, very chewy. And then the brown sugar on the inside isn't in its like crystal form still. It's actually almost melted and it kind of reminds me of molasses. So it's almost like a molasses um, mochi cake. Look at that, really unique texture. Um, not really the best or anything, just very simple but pretty good. So that definitely wasn't enough for breakfast. We are gonna head back into the market to a place that is serving a very, very unique dish. So we're at our next stop and this place is, as I mentioned, serving something very unique. So they're actually grilling uh, manto, which is a steamed bread on charcoal. So they're grilling the manto and then we've ordered one that comes with cream and condensed milk. So first she slathers on some cream and then she uses the condensed milk to uh, just completely smother it. So this is the sweet version. They also have toast that they're grilling in the same way on charcoal and you can get savory versions as well. We have it here and you can see that uh, burnt outer layer and this is just a steamed bread so it's very fluffy and soft and then a little crispy on the bottom. Then on the inside, all that condensed milk and cream has melted away into the manto. Mm. Oh, that's good. It is actually quite sweet. Both the cream and the condensed milk are full of sugar and they've melted away into the bun. It's kind of saturated the bun and it maintains its steamed texture. So it's got that really fluffy kind of bouncy texture to it. But then on the outside, there's kind of a crisp layer and very smoky from that charcoal. It's not much, but it's very unique and I've never seen it done this way anywhere else in Taiwan. Yeah, pretty good. Just here, bye bye. That was really cool. Really unique food and you're probably wondering why we're only eating little tiny things and that is because even though this Dangang town is very small and sleepy, there is a lot of food to try, a lot of unique foods. So we're just heading back into the market because there's another restaurant we want to try. Tucked down one of the small alleys off the main strip of the market is this stall that's selling traditional authentic Taiwanese meatballs. So they've got this big um, frying pan mm -hmm. filled with all the meatballs and they're kind of braising away. And also he's got different sausages, rice sausage and uh, pork sausage. So we've ordered up uh, two of their things. The first is of course the meatball. So you can see that they have this very glutinous wrapper that's made with rice flour. And then he's topped it in some garlic water 
with some sweet brown sauce and a little bit of cilantro. Over here we've got the sausage. This is the pork sausage and then once again topped with garlic and that brown sauce which is just really unique. So these meatballs are actually stuffed with pork and shrimps. Let's try one out. Oh my God, instantly the garlic just burns your mouth. There's so much garlic, it's almost like chili. It's so spicy and strong. And then that glutinous wrapper on the outside has the same texture as that brown sugar cake we had this morning. And then filled with chunks of pork. That's pretty good. Mm. Let's try one of these sausages. Mm. Once again, just really covered in that garlic. It is like scorching hot garlic that burns your mouth. And the sausage has a unique texture with a kind of uh, bouncy chewiness on the outside. It's pretty good sausage. Really interesting market. It's small, but full of unique little snacks. Um, really good vibe to it. Very local feel. So much garlic. <laughs> So Taiwanese meatballs are available all across the island. Usually they're a little bit bigger than that and those ones had a unique flavor. I would say for my liking a little heavy on the garlic that is going to wreck me for the rest of the day with the garlic in my taste in my mouth. Yeah. So we were just walking down the street, spotted these friendly ladies, and they're actually sun-drying mullet roe, which is a popular, very, very popular uh, cuisine, or I guess ingredient here in Taiwan. Usually you just eat it on its own, or maybe with a cucumber or something, and it's a, quite an intricate process, because they first need to wash it very thoroughly, and then they need to cure it, I think with salt, and then they'll sun-dry it for, I don't know, a couple days or something. But she's got all these ones laying out here, mullet roe, super cool. <laughs> So we just popped into this really small place. It's not busy right now. We're the only people here and we wanted to try their very unique dish called roll gul. And this is something that's con consisting of a lot of different ingredients. So first off is the sausages here. Then we have some uh, shredded pork bits. And then we have these big chunks of rice cake underneath. And then one of the really interesting ingredients here is these little prawns. They're called sakura prawns, and they're very important to Donggong because they're only found here and in one other place in Japan. So very uh, limited in the world. And then it's all swimming in this soup, this very thick, thick soup. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a mix here because you can see she put some sauce at the bottom, that brown sauce, and we wanna mix that all in, get all those ingredients mixed in. And I've never seen anything like this and that's why we wanted to come to Dongang to try all of these interesting dishes. So let me try a bit of the soup with some of this rice cake. Mm. Mm. The consistency is similar to congee and it's got a light seafood flavor which I really like. That rice cake was just completely like fall apart. It wasn't chewy like the rice cake we had this morning but more just like uh, fall apart in your mouth, crumble almost. Let's get a little bit of uh, some of the other ingredients here. I want to try one of the sakura shrimp and then maybe uh, the sausage and it's all just swimming in the soup which is so unique. Mm. Crunchy little shrimp, a sweet sausage. Wow, that's a unique dish, I like it. The variety of ingredients in here really complement each other. There's so many different things going on in here, but they really work well. I have to give it up though for the sakura prawn and then that fall apart rice cake. The sakura prawn has such a vibrant color to it, which I'm guessing the name comes from. And also that rice cake just goes well with it because it's a little crunchy from the prawn and then very soft from that rice cake. Mm. Wow, that was a really good, unique snack. This is the spot behind me. I'm gonna put all the information down in the description box for you guys to find it, but uh, that was 50 Taiwan dollars, but she didn't even let us pay. She was so friendly, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she was super friendly, and we just, we tried to pay her, but she was just like, She nope, wouldn't take the money. So we are going to head to the Donglong Temple, which is a very important site here in Donga. <laughs> Oh. 
So we've come down to the Donglong Temple, which is definitely the most important temple here in Dangang. And it was built in 1706, but it was destroyed by a typhoon and then they rebuilt it in 1894. And it has, in my opinion, one of the most magnificent gates in any temple in Taiwan. And actually this is the site of a very interesting festival that takes place where they burn a boat. And fortunately, my buddy Wes Davies is actually kind enough to give us some footage from that festival. So unfortunately we weren't around for the festival, but make sure to go check out Wes's channel, give him a subscribe and you can watch his videos on Taiwan, really great content. I would love to visit that festival someday, it just looks like a lot of excitement. So let's go inside the Donglong Temple and take a look inside. Definitely a beautiful temple, a lot of activity going on. The stonework at this one in particular is really incredible. It depicts all of these images and it's just, you could spend all day here just looking at all the different intricate details. And we are going to keep heading though because we're gonna go back to Kaohsiung. It is getting so hot and we're gonna ride the scooter back. It's about an hour, so that's gonna be a hot ride. But we wanna take you to see one more street food in Kaohsiung that I'm really, really excited to try. So we are back in Kaohsiung City now. That was about an hour drive. We are just off one of these main busy roads and uh, after a quick change we have come to have some roast duck. Love is love. Love is love. So you can see they've got all the ducks hanging here. So they'll hang them to dry for a little while before actually roasting them in these huge cauldrons. And uh, that helps to get that skin extra crispy because it's dried before they roast it. Uh, we've ordered up half a duck and uh, this is a takeout shop only. So we're gonna jump back on the scooter before taking it to the hotel to eat. <laughs> These are the big pots that they are roasting the ducks in and the owner is really, really friendly. They're actually using charcoal to roast these ducks. You can see all the excess oil dripping away. <laughs> really, really friendly guys. Okay, we got our duck. That was 250, so pretty cheap. It's a half a duck and they gave us the wraps and everything. And as I mentioned, we gotta go home to eat this because this is takeout only, but really cool place. Back in the hotel room now. That was such a cool restaurant and we've got a couple different things. So first off the main course is the duck meat with the skin attached. So you can see that beautiful glistening oily skin and then there's a nice chunk of meat on the bottom. Most of this, if not all of it, it should be boneless. So she actually takes the duck and kind of skims the outside of it to just get a little layer of meat, a layer of fat, and then the layer of that crispy skin. The way it's served is kind of Beijing style with these little, almost like tortilla wrappers, and then with a scallion, green onion, and then their special duck sauce. And wow, my mouth is watering like crazy because I love this stuff and I haven't had it in a long time. I'm gonna take a piece here, show you how to make it. So you can just put it inside, take a little bit of the sauce, 
put it on your wrapper. It's a nice brown dark sauce. There we go. And then take one of these green onions. They didn't give us a whole lot of green onions, so I'm gonna rip it in half. Just put half and then wrap this up all nice and pretty and just try it like so. Mm. Mm -hmm. That sauce is nice and sweet. You can definitely feel the oiliness of that duck meat on the inside. Crisp crunch from the green onion. And then that wrapper, it's a, got a little bit of an elasticity to it. But unfortunately I couldn't really feel the texture of that skin. So let me just go in and pick a piece or just a piece of skin like that. And let's try that. Oh. It just dissolves such a strong duck flavor, but not gamey, just really oily and natural flavor. So when you order half a duck, you also get this other dish, which is basically everything that's left over after they skim the outside of it. So there's a lot of bones, there's definitely some meat left over, and then they stir fry it with green onions, onions, and basil. You can see some of the pieces are just completely bone, but then if you do a little bit of searching, you can find some nice pieces of meat. Let me give this a try. Mm. They definitely started fried it with a little bit of chili too, because it's got some spiciness to it. That is really juicy. It's even more flavorful than the wrap, to be honest. Even though this is just the leftovers, it's still really good. Mm. Definitely a little harder to eat though. So they do actually give you gloves and it helps a lot because meat on the bones, like this stir fry dish is quite hard to eat with chopsticks. I've actually got the duck neck here. Let's give this a try. Mm. Whoa, we're really lean. This is such a messy meal to have at home. It is literally getting everywhere. There's sauce, there's duck oil, and the gloves are definitely a big uh, plus because you're gonna want them and we're just gonna have dessert, have these little uh, rice cakes that we bought at the market this morning. Cool. Mm. So sticky. Wow, that was some good duck. Look how greasy the plate is. <laughs> Super oily stuff, but really tasty and great day here in Dongong and now back in Kaohsiung. What do you think the best thing we ate today, Serena? I really enjoyed that charcoal grilled manteau. It was one of the most unique cooking processes of manteau I've ever seen. Mm. Like that a lot. Yeah, that was really good. It was unique. The flavors weren't really strong. I probably have to give it up for that duck. That duck was really good, especially the stir fried version of it. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and like and uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get some really cool perks like our monthly blooper reels. This bamboo is stuffed with the first milking of the day of a water buffalo. So before the baby has uh, suckled the teat. Okay, I can't say that. And also our personally curated food map so they can help you to find really good restaurants, street foods and stuff. And some places that we never even film at uh, on your travels. So the link for all that will be down in the description or it should be popping up on the screen somewhere. And we'll see you on the next episode of Chucks of Travel. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>